name is Mr. Finamar, and I'm going to spend a few minutes with you to explain Holy Mass etiquette. We're lucky here at Cardinal Legge School that we can go over in grade levels to celebrate Holy Mass in a church. And in a few days, we'll be over at St. Mary's Church, and I'd like to go over a few things with you to help you prepare for Holy Mass and to help you show respect when you're in St. Mary's Church. We'll talk a little bit about Holy Communion and receiving a blessing. I have some student volunteers here. We're gonna do our best to guide you step by step through the process. So sit back, relax, and here we go. Holy Mass etiquette. Before we show you the right way to enter a church, let's just take a second, let's just take a look at the wrong way to enter a church or a chapel. Watch closely, because you know what? We see this at every Mass. Watch carefully. This is the wrong way to enter a church or a chapel. When you enter a, a church or a chapel, the first thing that we do is we go to the holy water font. We stick our fingers in the holy water and then we bless ourselves in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We do this as a sign of our faith. The holy water reminds us of the sacrament of baptism, which we celebrate as Catholics when we're children. As you go into the church and as you go to your pew or your row of seats, you genuflect towards the front of the church. Some students choose to bow because maybe they have a sore leg or they can genuflect, but we bow or genuflect as a sign of respect, as a sign of love for Jesus, who is our King. When you enter a church, after you receive the holy water, you proceed to your pew or to your chairs, your row of seating. And before you enter the row of seating, you do something we call genuflecting. Now that's a strange word, but my friends here, they're going to demonstrate how you genuflect. So guys, the count of three, genuflect. One, two, three. Football players or athletes, basketball players, they might say, take a knee. It's very similar to taking a knee. But it's a sign of respect and adoration. Because genuflecting is something that the Romans would do when they were in the presence of Caesar. And our church was founded in Roman times. And so naturally, we want to worship God in a way that far exceeds that of Caesar but we genuflect because Jesus is our King. Once again, gentlemen, genuflect. A few of them even had the additional little uh, making the sign of the cross, which is also uh, perfectly acceptable and ver a very nice thing to do. Now maybe you have a bad back or maybe you're not feeling well. You can also bow. And that is something, too, which we do uh, in place of genuflecting. And so at the count of three, if you guys could demonstrate a bow. One, two, three. And that would be something that you do just before you took your seat in the church. Uh, bowing is uh, it's a beautiful gesture. And it would be something that you would have to do if you were in the presence of the Queen or the Governor General here in Canada you would have to bow. So, once again, gentlemen, if you could bow. One, two, three. Sign of humility. One of the most important parts of the Mass is Holy Communion. And I'd like to leave you with these thoughts. 
Only Catholic students are welcome to receive Holy Communion. We believe that the bread, after it's been blessed by the priest during the Eucharistic prayer, we believe that it is the body of Christ. It's Christ's body, it's the Blessed Sacrament. And only practicing Catholics are invited to receive Holy Communion. What do I mean by practicing Catholics? Do you go to church every Sunday? Do you go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation, to confession? If you haven't been to church, say in the past couple of weeks, and you haven't been to confession, I would suggest that you approach the priest or the minister of communion at this time requesting a blessing. So once again, only practicing Catholics are to receive Holy Communion. The non-Catholic members of our school community and those non-practicing Catholics, you're welcome to come forward to receive a blessing. And I'd like God's power to come up here, if he could come forward. He's going to demonstrate how you receive and how you stand for a blessing. God's power, if you could face the camera and show the students in the classroom how to receive a blessing. That is the pose. Now the minister of communion, when he or she, or Father Laborio, sees God's power, he will give a blessing. And what he'll say is, the blessings of Christ. A beautiful, beautiful blessing. That's something that all of us can do. All of us can bless one another. And that's what the minister of communion does. And then God's power after receiving the blessing returns to his seat. Thank you, God's power. Now, Damon and Joshua, they're going to come forward now to receive Holy Communion. And when they come forward to receive Holy Communion, Damon has got his hands. Notice how they're, they're folded or open to receive the, the Blessed Sacrament. He will approach the Minister of Communion. And this often happens where the student maybe is a little nervous or a little shy, and the student stands far away. Come as close as you comfortably can. The minister of communion will hold the blessed sacrament up and proclaim the body of Christ. Amen. Damon made the correct response. The blessed sacrament is then placed in Damon's hand. Damon then immediately consumes the blessed sacrament. And he returns to his seat. Joshua is going to do the same. Watch carefully. He bows his head as a sign of reverence. The body of Christ. The blessed sacrament is placed in Joshua's hand and he immediately consumes the blessed sacrament. Now some students, some staff, like to receive Holy Communion on the tongue. For them, they believe that the Blessed Sacrament is so holy, they're not even worthy to touch it. And so when they come forward, they, after the Blessed Sacrament is held for them, the body of Christ, they respond Amen, and they extend their tongue. And the Blessed Sacrament is carefully placed on the tongue. And then they leave and return to their seat. Once again, don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Please uh, approach the altar, approach the minister of communion with confidence. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants to be with you. Don't ever be afraid to approach. But the key is always to remember your hands are properly held up and you immediately consume the body of Christ after you say amen. Immediately. Don't walk away with the Blessed Sacrament because the ministers of communion have been instructed to watch for you. We don't want the Blessed Sacrament to be disrespected in any way. That's how important it is to us. Watch will demonstrate one more time the proper way to come forward for a blessing or to receive Holy Communion. 
This time we'll do it in real time. The blessings of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Students always have the option to remain in their pew, to remain in their seat. So if you're uncomfortable or maybe not feeling well uh, on the day of a Mass, uh, you're welcome to just stay seated in your pew. And once again, I would like to emphasize, please maintain holy silence. So if you're not going to communion, the choir will be singing. Just sit back and be still and know that the Lord is near. The Mass, you will be invited by the Cardinal Leger Liturgical Choir. This year, under the direction of Miss Susan Eagles, you'll be invited to sing at various parts through the Mass. In the pew in front of you, you'll find hymn books. The hymn books are numbered. All you have to do is, when instructed by the choir, open the hymn book to the page number or to the hymn number, open it up and sing along. Doesn't matter, everyone can sing. Everyone has a voice. God loves your voice. Jesus created you with your voice, and your voice is the one that Jesus really wants to hear. Jesus doesn't want to just hear old Finney. He wants to hear you too. Now, we have a few reminders for you, things to consider and remember whenever you're in a church. The first thing to remember is... No gum. No food. No food. What do you mean, no food? No Starbucks, no McDonald's, no Tim Hortons. Okay. No hats, guys. Guys, you can't wear a hat. You have to take it off. And smartphones, cell phones, turn them off or put them into mute. Put them in your pocket. If you leave them on your lap, you'll be tempted to email and tweet and Twitter. You'll be doing all of that during the Mass. Just put it away. Turn it off and put it away. What else don't we do? No headphones. No headphones mean no headphones, no earbuds, and no airpods. Just make yourself totally present. Relax. Keep these things in mind. My friends are demonstrating what you don't do when you're in a church or in a chapel. You don't talk. You try to maintain silence, holy silence. A church or a chapel is one of the places where you can just be still. You can relax. You don't have to impress anyone. All you have to do is be present and be silent. Guys, can you be silent for a minute? Yes. Yeah, I think they can. 